The fanatic, but we keep it 100, keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk, you know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina, upstate, yeah. hey, 64. Yeah, the F A N A T T I C C. The fanatic, where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call what I. Welcome into the Fan Act Sports Show for sports fans, by sports fans. Your boy Coach I, and of course, I got the stat guy with me. What's up, stat guy? on coach hey man it's that time the world's largest outdoor cocktail party i don't care what they call it that's what it's always gonna be for me and the rest of the dog nation <laughs> hey man they they can be partying in jacksonville we know that there's nothing to really talk about for college football week wrap up for week eight uh because neither one of these teams played both were off they traditionally take this week off before the rivalry game so it's Georgia, Florida. Like uh, there are, you know, depending on who you ask, what day you ask them. But pretty much, I think if we took a poll, Florida, it's either always Florida or Georgia Tech. But on to the game, man. We we've, we've uh, yammered enough about that. Georgia offense versus that Florida defense. Listen, Florida's defense say uh, I want to say it comes and goes. You know, when it's good, it's good. When it's not, it's not. Uh, what's funny is uh, I talked to some Florida fans, man. You know, some of the people, they they not really heavy on. Uh, I know Trey Dean had an injury, you know, kind of mid, uh, beginning of October. I think he's 100% now. I'm not pretty sure. I'm not sure about that. Florida fans, you can correct me. He should be good to go for this game. Uh, I know he was, uh, I can say, injured around, I want to say it was like end of September, beginning of uh, October. Uh, Brent Cox, uh, they don't like Brent Cox because he uh, kind of over, over pursues the play. It's almost like he only cares about sacks. I think he's been better this year than he has been in the past. Uh, he still still has room for improvement, though. Um, Amari Bernie's got four sacks on the year. Brenton's got two. Uh, I'm I'm a uh, just just football wise, I'm a fan of Gervon Dexter. I think he's good in the middle. Uh, initially at the beginning of the season, they tried him on that you know kind of like on a, uh, a edge technique. But that was, I don't know, I think most of the time now he plays on the inside. He makes more plays on the inside to me. Uh, they, they had a huge help when Jaden Hill came back in that secondary. Uh, he's he's helped. It. I think his first game back, he had like two picks. So their, their secondary is looking pretty good. What do you think about Florida's defense? Yeah, man, I mean, you're talking about a defense that only gives up 28 a game, um, which, you know, they've, they've already played some of the heavy hitters on their schedule. So... Um, kind of right where you expect an SEC team, maybe a team that's going to try to compete a little bit more. You'd like to have that number down a little bit less, but open the year off with a good Utah team. I mean, they haven't had the easiest schedule in the world, so only giving up 28 points a game. Mm-hmm. And then you look, and I mean, you're talking about 185 on the ground, 244 through the air. Um, that rush number's high for, an, for a good SEC defense. Uh, most lockdown SEC defenses – or in like that 90 to about 110 range. So that rushing yards a game that they're giving up is a high number. Um, but total defense, I mean, they're where they need to be. Um, I mean, a little high over 400, but they keep themselves in the game and give their offense a chance. Yeah. And uh, the defense, I mean, Tennessee, you know, they played Tennessee close uh, earlier this year. The defense, I mean, Tennessee did what Tennessee does. Uh but overall, they, they played them tough, uh, made some stops here and there to keep them in the game and, you know, allow for that offense to try to uh, score points. Now, on the Georgia offensive side, man, I mean, it, everybody knows what it is. It's, it's, I mean, this these last two seasons, it's been tight in you. You know, it's like our offense runs through our tight ends. Uh, we, hey, it looks good to us. We love, I know some people, I see some people on social media like, oh, you counting on your tight ends for, for offense. Like, okay, well, but our tight ends are better than most team skill player any skill player you know what i'm saying so it's like it doesn't matter as long as we move the ball that's all that matters we went through a little rough patch with the uh as far as the offense being focused look like against kent state and missouri and then kind of the first half against auburn too and then you know i told you i felt like in the second half of the auburn game once stetson fumbled the ball and they got that ball back it's like from there on through there, uh, the rest of the game, we just uh it's like the georgia offense came back to be what it was and i know uh against vandy we did to Vandy what we should have did to Vandy you know what I'm saying I'm not saying it was a huge win or whatever but we did what we were supposed to do so 
we do get some people. We should uh, have some people healthy this week. Uh, A.D. Mitchell actually has not played uh, but once since the um, – I want to say he got hurt in the uh, – it wasn't the South Carolina game. It was the game after South Carolina. Uh, Samford, I think it was. Uh, but he's been out. He played one or two plays to try to get him back in. Uh, but we should have a healthy A.D. Mitchell coming in uh, unless unless Kirby tells us something different uh, on Tuesday. Um, we should have Arian Smith be full goal. Like he's been in for about four or five plays trying to get his reps back up. It looks like Dominic Blaylock's back. One thing I can say is – Oh, Stet the mailman, man. He spread that ball around, man. Every game we've had at least eight different people catch a pass from Stets. And it's like uh, one game we had like 11 people have two different two receptions from Stets. And so I think that's where Georgia's going to be able to take advantage of some of uh, the Florida Gators defense defenders because I think Florida, uh, Florida has some good defenders here and there, but I don't think all 11 – are good and or or in the skill positions like you know i don't think all linebacker safeties and corners are good and we just got way too many people not to mention you know the running backs that have stepped up right i mean you're looking you're talking about georgia offense 41 points a game um just shy of 200 yards on the ground um almost just shy of 330 through the air over 500 yards of total offense and you brought up the tight ends man and this isn't this isn't your mama and daddy's locking tight end <laughs> Um, their tight ends will block downfield for the running backs, but they have playmakers at that tight end position um, with Brock Bowers and Darnell Washington. Um, it was so great to see El Eric Gilbert um, get his first touchdown reception in that Vandy game um, with some of the struggles he had. Dude's a game. I mean, when he's in and is owned, like, dude, is he's got the talent that the other two have, and that's a scary thing. And then you talk about your four deep is – the number one tight end coming out of the country last year out of high school, Oscar Delt, as a freshman, is y'all's fourth tight end. Obviously had the touchdown catch against South Carolina, but, I mean, y'all legit can go four deep at that position. Um, Oscar obviously gets garbage time minutes right now, but re realistically, four deep at that tight end position with guys that can make plays, um, expand mm -hmm. the field. Obviously, we see some of the reverse stuff with Brock. Um, Darnell can be a deep threat down the field because of his – ability to go up and high point the ball um, at being 6'7", and just his athletic prowess. Um, and really the passing game has kind of overshadowed what Georgia Staple has been previously, which is how good the running back room's been. And the running back room is no slouch this year. I mean, like I said, almost putting up 200 yards a game. Um, they're yeah. still in their own right. Yeah, yeah, and we had some young guys come on. Uh, of course, uh, Dejon Edwards, man, he's running the ball good, but Branson Robinson's been getting some totes. So, uh, you know, with Kendall Milton uh, being down, and hopefully we'll have him back this year, you know, it's just like running straight ahead, man. That dude's a uh, battering ram. But uh, one thing I, I want to see, I want to see some more, like, uh, early game, I want to see some more versatility. I think we, as the game goes on, we we show a lot of versatility. But as when we first start games, man, we throw a lot of screen passes, whether it be the tight end line and tight end out. Uh, Brock Vandergriff, uh, not Brock Vandergriff, sorry, Brock Bowers. Uh, Brock Bowers and Darnell Washington out wide, throwing tight end screens, throwing running back screens, wide receiver screens. I'm telling you, man, like <laughs> what I've noticed is, man, Brock's first, not necessarily his first catch, but his first target is always a uh, spread him out wide and get him a screen. And I get it. It works. But it's like we get too comfortable with that. And when we play Auburn, Auburn was all over that in the first half. And it's like it took us it took us probably a quarter and a half to like start changing that. And I don't know if that's because like Stetson just has control of it and he's trying to, you know, trying to throw those little layup passes. You know, it's like an extension of the run game. But I want to see more of that. I want to see more better run blocking. Uh, as of late, we've been blocking pretty good. But to start this, the first half of the season, the run blocking wasn't to what I thought it should be. Uh, pass blocking has been there. So I'm good with that. I hope we have all our weapons back and uh, we can see an offensive display, man. Now, on the other side. Hey, real quick, got... Isaiah. Go it ahead. not happened this week, um, but it is coming. You're, you're right about the, the little flip, the little flip shovel pass to Brock or a screen to Brock. I am telling you, especially with the speedsters on the outside coming back from injury, they are setting someone up to fake that and crush somebody over the top. It might not be floated this week, 
But before the end of the year, we're going to see a 70 or 80 yard bomb to start the game for Georgia coming off of the fake of how they normally like to start the game. They're rocking hey. somebody. That's a good call, man. And then that's a, we kind of mentioned that on our live stream on Tuesdays with the dogs, man. Like maybe like we hoping that it's a setup for later on. So that's a good call, stat guy. Now that Florida offense, man, they got some playmakers out there too, starting at the trigger, man. I know he's not everybody's favorite passer, but the dude is just an athlete. And I mean, honestly, like in, in certain games, he just brought it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, arguably the two hardest games on his. He's kind of almost, if you think about it now, and I'm just thinking about it like as we're talking, he's kind of played to the level of his competition, you know? Like when he played Utah and he played um, Tennessee, I think those are his two best games, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. He, I mean, running against Utah, he was just out of this world and then like making the play where he's doing 360 fake passes and stuff and then with Tennessee he's brought the pass game out the bag you know what I'm saying throwing for a, a, about a billion on that Tennessee secondary so but with that being said though you you also look at probably I would say probably the best defense he's played this year was Kentucky and he did not play good so what is he going to do going up against a defense that is in the top of, top of echelon of college football. They're, they're obviously not the 2021 20, Georgia D, but no. don't get it. This Georgia defense is elite. Yeah, I want our defense, man, to get more. Uh, we get a lot of quarterback pressures is what we get. And I guess at the end of the day, as long as you're affecting the quarterback, uh, that's great because if you pressure the quarterback, there's more chance for an interception. I know we don't have the sack numbers that we normally – uh, do not even just talking about 2021, uh, even 2020 and 2019 have, uh, you know, more sacks at this point, but we got a lot of pressures on the quarterback and sacks will come. I just, I need everybody to stay disciplined. Our discipline has been here and there has been a problem, especially for like Kamari. Kamari is a hell of a, Lasseter is a hell of a uh, athlete on our side. Um, I need him, as long as he stays focused, like, you know what I'm saying, and don't, you know, keep it, <laughs> stays on his assignment and don't keep his eyes out there. Backfield, man, uh, when he has, tr you know, he has steady eyes, he plays good. When he's, when he loses, when he loses uh, his eye, eye discipline, then he gives up a big play. Good thing is, he's good and physical. We've been having a young guy, Dalen Everett, been coming in playing. So we got a good rotation out there. I mean, we steady on the other side with the, uh, with the boundary corner, um, uh, uh, my boy Ringo, uh, Ringo's out there, you know, so, uh, and I, I just want to clarify something. So I was, you know, I was, uh, talk, ch chatting it up with some dog fans. It was like, oh man, we got, we wonder who going, who we going to put on this guy, who we going to put on that guy, like as in corners. I was like, we don't, we don't, uh, travel. That's what they call that. We don't travel. Uh, what we do, we have a boundary corner and a field corner. Boundary corner plays typically the short side of the field and the field corner plays the wide side of the field. Boundary corner Normally is your best cover corner because it's easier for the quarterback to throw high, uh, high percentage uh, passes over there. And that's typically where the quarterback goes, the short side of the field. Even if it's a, a, a longer pass, it's still t typically either in the middle or the short side of the field because it's just an easier pass than trying to throw it to the other hash mark. That, But uh, but some positives on that Florida offense, Jeff. Tell, tell us about their stats there. So you're, you're looking at a – an offense that is very balanced, 213 on the ground, 217 through the air. Um, and it all it all rides on AR, right? I mean, their their run game, they got some running backs. Obviously, they got little ETN. Um, he's coming along. But, I mean, they go as AR goes. Um, you know, he's, we're starting to see him back. Um, you know, there were reports maybe he was banged up a little bit in that Kentucky game and everything. But – if, if he's aggressive and he's the aggressor and kind of pushing the flow on the offense, their offense is a lot better. If he's kind of timid on offense, you you start seeing some question marks. And so we're going to see this weekend, what day are we going to get? Is he going to be attacking like a dog or is he going to be kind of laying back in the weight? And so, but I mean, again, very balanced between the rushing and passing attack while not really being balanced because it's all on AR's shoulders. But yeah, Mont well, Montreal Johnson leads them in rushing with, with AR being second. But ETN, I feel like, is that dynamic guy. Like, if you miss a tackle, he's taking it to the house type deal. Right. But on the other side, man, this, like I said, this this might not be the world-class defense that y'all had last year, but y'all's defense is still one of the best in the country, if not the best. You're talking about only giving up nine points a game. You're talking about only giving up 163 through the air. 
and then a stagnating 83 yards a game on the ground. And I just think, man, that's – you talk about those kind of numbers. What's – I mean, can Florida run against y'all, or does Florida even want to do that? But I think Florida yeah. has to try to stay balanced in their attack. The fact that they are balanced, I think, will help them. You can't become one-dimensional against this Georgia team because y'all are good in all facets of the game. If they turn y'all into a – if Georgia turns Florida into a one-dimensional team, whether pass or run, Georgia's going to pin their ears and it's going to get ugly quick. Yeah, and our defense this year is just to, to differentiate from 2021. 2021 was built front to back. You know what I'm saying? We had that front seven that was good and our back back end was solid. Plus we had like people that was going to make those spectacular plays. Like this defense here is built from the back to the front where we have a good secondary. Uh, I feel like an elite secondary. And then uh, especially with uh, Chris Smith at safeties, one of the highest rated safeties in the country. Yeah, uh, and then we have a really good front seven, really athletic, can run side to side. I can tell you this: if Florida starts going east to west, that's not good for them. If they want to have any chance, they got to run right, 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 right down the middle, right into the teeth of the defense to try to move that ball. Uh, we should have Smile Munden back. He's been out the last two games on injury. Uh, you know, what I'm saying we've been getting some work for Ryan, uh, for Ryan Davis, um, at, and building that linebacker depth. So. It's going to be interesting to see, like you say, if they're going to try to stay balanced because in years past, man, and I know some Florida fans didn't like it, man, just some of the play calling decisions by Dan Mullen, uh, you know, in that game, other than 2020, you know what I'm saying, when they had that, you know, that explosive offense. It's just like he just abandoned the run altogether. <laughs> like, and that's something you definitely don't want to do. You definitely don't want to abandon the run, even if it's not working. You want to keep, keep defenses honest. So on to the predictions, man. Give us the over-under – and then what you think, give, give us your score prediction. Yeah, man. So the over-under on this game is going to be 56 points. Um, and you're looking at a spread of 22 and a half. Um, I know that you personally um, hate taking the dogs when they're um, favored like that. I mean, you always think that you know, you know they're going to win. You're going to pick them to win. You're probably not going to pick them to cover. But look, man, this, this Georgia team is the real deal. Um, they're my best team in the country, and this Florida, Florida team is not. Um, I have Georgia winning 42-17, to 17, and I don't even think the score is actually going to be that close. I think the game's going to get out of hand quick. Florida might add something late in the second half, but I think this game's going to get ugly from the start, and Georgia's just going to have a field day um, and then enjoy the party. Mm. I hope it goes the way you say, uh, stat guy. Uh, I got this game. You right. I am going to pick the dogs to win. And you are also double right. Two times right. However you want to say it. I'm not going to take them to cover the spread. Because 22 points is a lot in a rivalry game. I know, you know, we beat them bad last year. But if you remember the game last year, it was actually a good back and forth. I think we had the lead or whatever, but just by like a, a touchdown, maybe three or whatever. It was just back and forth until that onslaught right before halftime just kind of took the heart, you know, away from Florida and then we just piled on after that. I got this game you said 22 points? Ooh, that's a lot of points. Mm. Give me 30. 22 and a half. Hmm. Give me 34-17 dogs. 34-17 dogs. That's what I'm calling. So I think we'll control the game. Uh, I think, you know, we may start out, you know, first quarter 7-3, something like that, and then, like, you know, be like a 10-10 at one point maybe. But then I just think we're going to control the rest of the game, and uh, I don't. I think we'll pull off. Um, but I think Florida's going to come out ready to play. This is one thing I told somebody. Uh, I think I was telling my boy uh, – one of the guys I went to school with. A lot of years, I feel like whether it starts from the coaching staff and works its way down to the players and the fans or whatever, or you know, vice versa. I just think everybody, like I say, coaches, players, Florida. I think they know technically that Georgia is better than them, and that's what I don't like. Because most years, they it doesn't matter how Georgia looks, Florida still thinks they're better than us or can beat us. And when you have a team that, that comes into the game like, okay, well, this is the better team, so nobody expects us to win, you don't like to play teams like that. That's why I think they'll keep it close early. But at the end of the day, I do think we're just the better, we are the better team, and I think we're too deep, and I think our offense is, is way too deep, and I don't think they, they can put up points at the clip that we can put up points. So I'm going 34-17 dogs. So, hey, man. 
the way either way the cookie crumbles. We're both taking the dogs. Um, you're looking at upper echelon of the SEC East versus a team that is staring being fifth place in the SEC East down the barrel. Well, that's a video for another day. I don't know if I got Florida fifth, but uh, yeah, I know you game cops got Florida coming up after we play them. So there it is, Georgia, Florida fans. Hey, man, get in the comments. Let us know what you think the score prediction is and what you think the keys to the game are. And if you're a Florida fan, sorry, I don't care. This 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 week, I can't like you. You've been showing me a lot of love on the channel this year, and I've been doing Florida games. I will put in my biased, uh, unbiased opinion. I like it, but for this week, until Saturday night, <laughs> you're my enemy. So for the stat guy, Coach I, this fan, we out. We got it jumping like it's that valley. I call my dogs out the pound. Let's go eat. Turn on the fan at it. Let's have a debate. Who really hold down the southeast from state to state? What team hungry gonna eat everything up off they plate?